Jazaki show on the travel. It's too sweet. Anyway, it's the time of year. Trade deadline day. And I mean to do this every year. But this year, I, I, I really think I'm going to hold myself to it. And start doing this as an annual thing. Because it happens annually. And for the last couple years, I've tried doing it tried doing this on trade deadline day and it's never worked out for me there's always been something that hasn't gone right and i've just abandoned the whole thing but as of now we're going to give it the college shot and do this annually having said that let's talk about the 2022 edition of the nhl trade deadline So before I go into depth on the actual day itself, what I like to do, and what I've always wanted to do, is at least consider talking about the deals the week before, because as in most trade days lately, the action always happens leading up to the day, and then the day of, you're left with leftovers. So let's go over the stuff that happened the week before. So starting off March 14th, Colorado started the ball rolling when they acquired Josh Manson out of Anaheim and kept it going the next day, picking up Nico Sturm out of Minnesota for a Tyson Jost. Decide on yourself who wins that one, because personally, me, I like both players. And this is when things start getting interesting. The Rangers acquired Frank Vetrano out of Florida for a conditional fourth rounder. Now, initially I was a little shocked at the Vetrano trade, but then the, flat, the Panthers went out and got Ben Sherratt out of Montreal for picks and prospects, including that fourth rounder they just picked out in New York. And Calgary went out and got themselves Cali Yancroke for a package of picks. I'll discuss Seattle's moves in a separate video, which is coming out right after this one. Two days later, Chicago picks up Radish and Katchuk, plus two conditional firsts out of Tampa Bay for Brandon Hagel and two-fourths. As good as this looks for Tampa, it's those firsts that has more interest to me. Yes, they're conditional on the top ten protected, idea but is Tampa going to really blow chunks the next two years that has to be top 10 protected yeah it's merely just a save their butt kind of move but they're giving up two firsts ouch the 19th was no different Anaheim let us know they're in full seller mode sending Nick Delorier to Minnesota for a third rounder as well as sending Hampus Lindholm and Cody Curran to Boston for a package. Boston wins this one because they signed Lindholm right afterwards. So, yeah, the picks will do wonders in Anaheim once they mature, but this is a Boston trade. This is a Boston win. Then your big trade of the day, Owen Tippett, as well as Next year's third and a conditional for 2024 first out of Florida for Claude Giroux, who just finished playing his 1,000th game. German Rupstoff, Connor, Connor Bunman, and a fifth rounder in 2024. Florida, making the moves. I'll give you my thoughts on Florida at the end, which brings us up to trade deadline eve. And there's a lot of stuff. Florida's not done. Picking up Robert Haig out of Buffalo for a sixth rounder. Hamonique goes to Ottawa from Vancouver for a third rounder. Stetcher goes to L.A. from Detroit for a seventh rounder. Travis Dermott goes to Vancouver from Toronto for a third rounder. Just so Toronto could do this. Picking up Giordano and Blackwood, Blackwell out of Seattle for picks. Again, I'll discuss Seattle in its own video. 
Senators get Matthew Joseph out of Tampa for Nicholas Paul. I think Ottawa stole this trade. Scott Wedgwood gets traded to Dallas from Arizona for a 23 conditional fourth round pick. Predators get Lauzon out of Seattle for a pick. And to close out trade deadline eve, Winnipeg reacquires Mason Appleton from Seattle for a fourth next year. Which brings us up to deadline day itself. Let's discuss. Mason Beaulieu goes to Pittsburgh from Winnipeg for a seventh round pick, which is conditional. Arizona gets the rights to Jack McBain for a second rounder, which was previously picked up from Vancouver. That's a good move for Arizona right there. Marcus Johansson goes back to Washington from Seattle. And on top of picks, Seattle actually got a player back. I'll discuss in a separate video. Arizona picks up Brian Little and Nathan Smith for a fourth rounder. Another good move by Arizona. More in picking up Little. I mean, what they do with him is another question, but they at least got Little out of the deal. Jacob Middleton goes to Minnesota from San Jose for Capo Kakinen. Interesting move. I'll say that much. LA and Nashville make a prospect deal. It's LA picks up a lard, and Nashville picks up Braden Burke. Chicago picks up a conditional second round pick for Marc Andre Fleury. Now, this is definitely a, a for the now move because I really don't know if Fleury's going to stick around after the end of the season. If he does, it'll be nothing short of amazing, but. It's a win-now move, I guarantee that. Nashville picks up Bija from Toronto for futures. The Rangers, they're still around, picking up Justin Braun out of Philly for next year's third rounder. Boston picks up Josh Brown and a seventh rounder. And this surprised me. For Zach Sinitian. I'm surprised they gave up on Sinitian so quickly, but... This could be a great thing for the Senators. Colorado gets Arturi Lakenen out of Montreal for Justin Barron and the 24 second rounder. Good move by Colorado. Detroit picks up Oscar Sundquist, Jake Waldman, and a 23 second rounder out of St. Louis for Witowski and Nick Letty. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Letty. I know he's hoping to play another four years, even though Detroit was offering him a three-year deal. We'll see. Andrew Hammond, not staying long in Montreal, going to Jersey for Nathan Schnarr. Interesting. Washington picked up Johan Larson for a third rounder from Arizona in next year's draft. Ottawa picked up McNevin out of Calgary for futures. Rangers and Lightning making a simple swap. Rangers get Merkley and Sharks get Potato. Did I say Lightning? Because I meant the Sharks. Now I can say Lightning. Lightning pick up Riley Nash out of Arizona for futures. And the Rangers are continuing to make noise. Picking up Andrew Kopp and Winnipeg's sixth rounder in 23. For Morgan Barron two seconds and next year's fifth the seconds are conditional these are conditions jets fans let me know kings and jets swap prospects nelson nogger from winnipeg marcus phillips going the other way from la and then they went and picked up sanford out of ottawa for a fifth rounder anaheim still selling Sending Ricard Raquel to Pittsburgh for a nice little package. Good move for Raquel. Oilers pick up Kulak out of Montreal. Lagas in a conditional second and 24 seventh. 
conditions based on the orders making the cup pretty uh pretty confident Oilers then pick up Derek Broussard, who was traded on deadline day again for a fourth rounder. Now this one surprised me. It shouldn't, but it did. Nemestikov to Dallas from Detroit for a 2024 fourth rounder. I was hoping Nemestikov can make the best out of that situation. And Andrew Cogliano, I didn't even know he was still playing, to be honest. Goes from San Jose to Colorado for 2024 fifth. Good for Cogliano. Hopefully he'll have some playoff success. Flames pick up Carpenter from Chicago for 2024 fifth. Sharks and Lightning swap some minor leaguers. Moran going to San Jose. Melnichuk going to Tampa Bay. Tyler Mott goes to the Rangers from Vancouver. For a 2023 fourth rounder. And Seattle picks up another player. Picking up Victor Rask for futures. And then you have your only three-way deal. Which sees Max Domi going from Columbus to Florida to Carolina. With Tyler Inamoto. Columbus picks up Aiden Hreshek. Florida picks up half of Domi's salary. Plus a sixth round pick, and from Carolina, they got Korshkov, or at least the signing rights. And a trade currently, apparently, having an issue already, Dadanoff to Anaheim, along with a 24 second rounder, which is conditional. Vegas gets the contract of Ryan Kessler and John Moore. Now, as I said, there's an issue with this. As I'm recording this, it came out that Anaheim was on Dadanov's no trade list. So this could be a bit of a bit of a problem. But in a nutshell, that was trade deadline day. So here's my picks for winners and losers in today's trade deadline and the week leading to it. Now your first real winner has to be Florida. I mean, they're definitely letting everybody know they're all in for a long playoff run. And I'd love to see it happen. I mean, when you're in the same state as Tampa Bay, you got to be competitive. And they let it be known, picking up Sherratt, picking up Giroux, being comfortable with Bob Brofsky and the net and everything they got around him. Yeah, Ekblatt's out right now, but he'll come back. They could be, they could be vicious. Yeah, I'm going to say Minnesota. And it's more than just picking up Marc-Andre Fleury. It's picking up Laurier out of Anaheim for basically nothing. It's picking up Tyler Jost out of Colorado. Add that to Kaprizov. And every little piece they have in their organization right now, it could be, it could be a good Western Conference playoffs. For the Bruins... Picking up Lindholm and knowing to just sign him to a new deal as soon as you got him. That was a smart move. And it should hopefully keep their defense solid for at least a couple years. At least that's the hope anyway. Now as for who I think lost this day. Toronto. <laughs> yes, reuniting Giordano with Brody. Is a great thing but does that solve your first round problem that you've had for well over a decade we'll talk after that first round yeah the flyers got absolutely fleeced out of Giroux, but they let it happen so you gotta wonder what else is going on in philly what's going to happen in the off season there i think the changes are a lot more than just Losing Giroux. And yeah, I'm saying Tampa didn't have a good trade week, trade day. Giving up two firsts ugh, in consecutive years, no less. And again, yeah, they're conditional. Yeah, there's a good chance Tampa doesn't finish in the bottom ten. But two firsts. Nobody gives up two firsts unless it's for an absolutely bonafide superstar. And... Who knows, maybe 
Maybe the return will turn out to be just that. I just don't know. That was another one of Chet's hockey shows. I want to thank you for tuning in. Don't think. I don't appreciate the gesture. Especially if you're here. It's a great thing for both of us. You know, I get to talk, you get to listen. How could it be bad? So while you're here, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, and if you really want to, that red button that says subscribe all over it, hit that thing. We're going for 250. A subscribe makes you feel good. So if it makes you feel good, do it. You won't you won't regret it. My lonely social is in the description down below. So moving forward, I have a Seattle video to post. Or at least a Seattle video to make. But either way. In the meantime, in between time. Looking for more videos from the Trev. Later.